on Tuesday the 21st of April, which also corresponds to the 27th day of the Jewish month of Nisan, is the day that is being designated for the Jewish people to remember the Holocaust. Uh, literally, it's called Yom HaShoah, the day of the catastrophe. And today in our service, we will light candles in remembrance of the six million Jews that died in the Holocaust. Jews who were murdered as part of a program of deliberate and systematic state-sponsored extermination planned and executed by the Nazis under Adolf Hitler. Yet today, we also give thanks to God for His faithfulness because he has kept the Jewish people uh, through many, many centuries of persecution and near annihilation. And today we can actually proclaim God's faithfulness, even as we see the nation of Israel having come out of the ashes of the Holocaust. And so we can say together with the writer of the book of Lamentations, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning, great is his faithfulness. Now in Melbourne in particular we are certainly uh, impacted by the Holocaust because in fact Melbourne has the highest number of Holocaust survivors per capita than any other city in the world. And so uh, the Holocaust has impacted uh, some people in our congregation as well and we'd like to uh, remember them as uh, we mention names of uh, family members who have died in the Holocaust. And so today we're also remembering the people who died from Mori Furman's family. Also, uh, Elia Avensky's family, Jenny Morris and her family, the Barry uh, Bierski and his family, Sophia uh, and her family, Nettie Taper, who we're going to have uh, a testimony from in, in a moment, and her family, Leo Clayman and uh, two deceased members of our community, Trudy Snyers and Victor Bassin, all had family members that died in the Holocaust. And so as a community, let us uh, remember, as we light uh, the six candles in remember of the six million. And so can I ask uh, Louise to come and uh, do that for us as uh, I say Kaddish, this ancient prayer uh, that is a memorial for those who have died, but really it is a praise to God. And so we give thanks to God for his faithfulness as we remember the six million. Before I light the candles, I'm just going to say a blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, ashe kichanu, ke ashe zachreinu, vevorei ha'esh, shel kidusha. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us when we remember and creates the fire of sanctification. Baruch atah Adonai, Dayan ha-emet. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha-olam, she'echiyanu v'ki'imanu v'higiyanu l'azman ha-zeh. Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, the true judge, blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life, sustained us, and brought us to the season. Amen. Yitkadal v'kadash shemei rabah. Amen. Ba'alma divara chirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayachon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael Bagala uvizman kariv v'imru. Amen. Yehei shmei rabba mevarach leolam olame almaya. Yitbarach v'ishtabach v'itpa'a v'itramam v'itnase v'itada v'itale v'italel shmei d'kudasha beruchu. Leolam in kol b'chata v'shirata tush b'chata v'nechemata d'amiran ba'alma v'imru. Amen. Ose shalom b'mrumav Hu yase shalom aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru. Amen. Let's say together the English. Magnified and sanctified be his great name. Amen. In the world which he created according to his will, may he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, swiftly and soon to which we say, Amen. 
Blessed be God's great name to all eternity. Blessed, praised and glorified, exalted and extolled, honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is He beyond all earthly words and songs of blessing, praise and comfort to which we say, Amen. May He who makes peace in His high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel to which we say, Amen. And so now we have the privilege of hearing a bit of the testimony of uh, Neti Taper, a Holocaust survivor who's also part of our congregation. For those who come regularly, she's the one who always greets us on a Shabbat morning with a wonderful smile and beautiful, warm and welcoming heart. Let's hear Neti's testimony. Thank you, Neti. I'm Neti Taper Shoemaker. I was born in 1938 in the Jewish hospital in Amsterdam. Uh, at the beginning of the war, we were living in Amsterdam in the Jewish area uh, called Glorianstra. The war really came to a head. They were rounding up the Jews to be killed. We all lived in this two-bedroom house and it was just getting far too much for my mother. We always had to be quiet and not allowed to make a noise. And we were, of course, still very young, so it makes very hard. My mother kept pestering my father that she wanted to go for a small walk, just get out of the house and get some fresh air. Well, we weren't even five minutes away from the house when this big soldier who walked up to us because they had been looking for my father all these years and of course we were arrested right there and then. My father and my brother were taken away and then my mother and I went after that and we all went to the same prison in Harlem first that at the end of June we were taken out of there and I saw all the women going into these trucks from the soldiers there. And I remember waving goodbye to my mum. After two days there, um, there was a lady that came to and picked Alex and me up. And we went to Amsterdam. So the Germans started to inspect the houses to see if there were any young men in hiding and in the block of flats where we were, if they found anyone, we would all be told to come out of the house and go to the city square. And we had to watch this young man being shot. By then I was six years old and I was very traumatic. I was about at school for a couple of months when all of a sudden um, we were at home at the weekend and that was somebody ring the doorbell and my auntie let this man in and he looked terrible. This man was all so skinny and he looked dreadful. My auntie turned around and she said, can't you say hello to your dad? And I didn't recognize my own father. He only stayed that day and then he went back to Amsterdam. He was just searching among the Jewish people who came back and asking, have you seen Margareta? Have you seen the version? After our switch, where they had gone to, my mother and my auntie, they were sent to different camps. But the minute they arrived there, my mother was so weak for three days with no food or water or anything on this cattle train that when she got off, she collapsed and died right there and then. So there is no grave of my mother. They just threw them in ditches. I started to think I'm a Jewish person. Probably I can get help from if I go to the synagogue. Nobody's taking care of the synagogue because all the Jews were, were killed and nobody came back again. When you have started looking for God, He's not going to let you go. And so I had this girl next to me in the, in the room next to me at the, at the nurse's home. She said, well, would you like to come with me to church? And I said, oh, what church is that? And she said, oh, it's a Baptist church. So very reluctantly, I went with her and 
the youth group there, there were so many young people and people were happy. They were singing even when they left the church. They were still singing while they were walking out. But through the youth group, um, uh, I met Peter, my husband-to-be. We only knew each other two years and we married. And a month later, we came to Australia. So I was only one month married as a young bride. By the end of 1962, we moved to Kerrang. Special missionary coming out. He was so plain in explaining uh, the gospel and why Jesus came to this earth to die for our sin. That was the first time I ever heard why Jesus who Jesus was and why Jesus came. I just changed. I had all of a sudden found that I didn't have to carry any more of these burdens that I've been carrying around and that Jesus had come to set me free. I spoke to the pastor, told him that I was Jewish and that I'd lost my family in the war and that. And he said, well, my dear, he said, now, now you have become a Christian, you're not a Jew anymore. And I was so shocked. Why wouldn't I be a Jew? I was born a Jew. And why did my family, why did my mum and my grandparents and aunts and uncles die? I was just so upset that I decided then and then I would never, never talk to anybody, tell them at, at all. And I wouldn't tell anybody that I was a Jew. Neither my children. Margaret, my eldest one, she was about 13 and she started asking. So I told her, I said, Margaret, um, we are Jews and we lost all our family in the war and you're not allowed to talk about it in case we get a bomb in the letterbox. Then when she grew up, she said, a meeting I went to from, a, it's called a Messianic meeting. And I said, what is that all about? And I'm very impressed. She said, Mum, I want you to come. And I went there and it was from Celebrate Messiah. When I saw these Jewish people there singing and happy and clapping and really, I was just stunned. They were uh, singing a song and all of a sudden I just cried and cried because that was the song my mother had taught me and I didn't know and it was Shalom Aleichem, and I just couldn't believe it. Coming to Beit HaMashiach um, was amazing for me, not just to feel at home. I have grown so much in the Lord, it's just been an amazing journey. I just feel so, so blessed, and I'm so thankful that the Lord has directed my path to, uh, to be part of this congregation to know that God had done so much for me and that he set me free from all the worries and all the problems I've been through and from uh, all the agony and losing family, um, not being brought up in a loving home. I, I think I probably would have gone off the rails if I hadn't found God and I'm very thankful for him and blessed him.